So good morning from day number three. Uh, we are doing Universal Hollywood thing, as you may have guessed. We're already in the room. Yay! So I emailed them and asked if we could drop our bags off. So I thought we were just gonna leave them behind the counter. But then the lady was like, oh, let me check and see if your room's ready. And she had a room available. And it's massive. It is massive. So we'll do a quick room tour before heading off. Because we're a little bit delayed. Yeah. And so yeah, we were waiting around for the Uber and lift prices to drop and we didn't get anything lower than sixty dollars. But she was awesome, so yeah, big shout out to Peggy who was listening to Peggy. Class, uh, <laughs> listening to classical music from the movies. Oh my god. That was the most relaxing like taxi Uber experience of my life. It was just nice and chill, wasn't it? Was it was lovely. Oh right, okay no. If anyone ha is a fan of the holiday, the Christmas movie. Um, obviously, Kate Winslet goes to LA, doesn't she, Rob? Right. And when Jack Black first appears to drop off stuff for Cameron Diaz's ex, there's music playing on like the intercom thing, and Kate Winslet is like, "Did you write this?" That was played in the car as we were coming into Hollywood. I'm gonna grab. Do the rush. Anyway, I'll do a quick room tour for you. So we'll start all, all the way down here. Do the bathroom first. Some big mirror, very big unit here, and a tiny little sink. Everything you need, towels and all. So it's just a lovely little shower as well. And so hopefully this one won't be getting splashed all over the floor like the last one, because it's pretty straight down. Then we've got microwave, coffee maker, fridge and sink out here as well. Ice bucket as well, need a bit of ice later. As you can see, Leanne's very far away. I've got to zoom in on her just to catch up to her. Ready, and there she is. All the way out. Yeah, another mirror. That's me. Little nook here as well. And the same with a little desk there as well. A little book. TV, chest drawers that we won't be using, a wife, and then we're at the bed, which has already had the uh, the fellow in seal of approval with a little jump onto it. The going to do it again. <laughs> Leanne's just breaking things as she goes along. Our bedside cabinets, and the view is it's just on some way, but we're only here one night. And so we're only going to be sleeping in bed till half three because we've got to get up at four because we've got a seven o'clock flight. To Orlando, I love you, Orlando, not SeaWorld but Disney and maybe golfing. We could Fantasia Golf if you want it. We should take the guys, see who's the real competitive one. God, can you imagine? They'll be falling out. It'd be a rematch between you and Tom, to our friend Tom Vernon of Beards and Vibrators. Very competitive. And they, him and his girlfriend Tish, I was done, picked us up before we flew. Um, him and Rob were playing FIFA. And it didn't end well. There was two very huffy men on the sofa. I didn't huff. Me and Tisha just enjoyed some champagne and cuddling Ray. <laughs> right, it. anyway, we are going to head off, get some breakfast, and um, to go. And then go to Universal. I've just checked the wait times. Most of them are still showing up in like 10, 5 minutes. So, here's to a good day. from the park to made in one piece all checked in as you see at the hotel we've gone through city walk done security so we haven't actually had a chance to really block anything 
We're going to vlog Steve Walk later on. Yes. We probably are going to end up picking up food there. But no, we're just walking through now. Hello Kitty's over there. Okay. What are we going on first? Have we decided? So you went to do Jurassic World. Okay, we're going to do Jurassic World first. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Head down. At the moment, wait times aren't too bad, but still early doors. But you compare this to how Disney was. It's a little bit quiet, isn't it? Oh, it's cool, isn't it? It is. I tell you what, I wasn't fair for because I'm so used to Disney out oh, like checking bags by hand that I am. And we're going for the extra room yeah. machine in the end. I had the only bag open ready to, uh, for it to be checked. You can see the tips of Hogsmeade over there. So I'm not too sure what's going around there. So there's a lot of people about. There you got Shrek, Trolls, and Pittsburgh as well. Oh, I it's just it is nice to see characters be able to hold again, isn't it? Yeah. Like, how nice was it yesterday to hug sadness? Oh, oh. oh. Yeah, we'll straight down. Where are you going? Look, Springfield just there. Animal actors just there, just like, there's Hogsmeade, it's strange seeing Hogsmeade just like that, leading yeah. straight out. Are we going the right way? Yeah. We're walking just past there and Springfield now. We're actually walking through Springfield. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you very much. Well, we find where Rob's gonna be later. Let's say that'd be Bumblebee. 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 That thing feels pretty cool. First name, Bob. There we go, heading into the lower lock. So you look at the wait time, Jurassic World 10, the Mummy 5, Transformers 10. So you always forget with um, Universal Hollywood, you have to go up and down, up and down. But that's you. Incredible. I feel like this one might be a little bit more talky than the last few Disney ones. Just because we're going to try and fit a lot in today. Look at that. First ride of the trip. <laughs> well, the first ride was on the, uh, oh, yeah, the tram. The tram. Step down. Spin around. What? So anyway, we'll see you when we get on some rides. Oh my days, Pansy. So, Nintendo's just down oh there. God. That's the, how far they are at the moment. So, and the views are stunning. We're gonna go head down to Jurassic World. So, am I gonna carry your pin? Three rides so far. Yes. Every one of them has been front row. And you can see behind us, Bumblebee's out. 
So, so far we did Jurassic World, we're at the front. Leanne got soaked. Yep. She's still wet now. We then went and did The Mummy, Grunville. What's yep. What's your opinion? Loved it. Only complaint is a bit short. Yeah. Could have done with being a bit longer. So I'm so used to the one in uh, Universal in, in Orlando. And that is pretty long. And then we just went and did um, Transformers, which we also front row with us. So I think Leanne's was getting a coffee now, is that right? Yeah, but we need to find the toilets. We do need to find the toilets. Where am I going? Hi. Bye. Millions of years ago, they were the size of turkeys. They were about two feet high, about six feet long, and they did have feathers around them. They looked more like birds, in fact. Our raptors were purely like dinosaurs. And her tail moves a little more than the usual raptor. The raptors, millions of years ago, their tail had a lot more bone in them, so they remained steady, but they were able to glide some say could fly a little, not in the sky like a pterodactyl, but could come off the ground. Now those beautiful 83 razor sharp teeth are used for one objective that is obviously to chop down on her prey and to eat her food. But the raptors way back when would eat smaller mammals, reptiles and insects. Our raptors eat chicken, cows and goats. And for the treat, we feed them frozen mice. You like frozen mice, Blue? She I see that smile, yeah, I She likes it. frozen mice, yeah. Now we feed her frozen mice for two reasons. To keep up that natural hunting instinct, but also to clean her teeth, her pearly whites. Just like a milk bone does with a dog. Sorry. Frozen mice clean those teeth. Right, Blue? Good job, girl. How are you folks? Where are you from? Did we just met Blue? Some great dinosaur fossils we discovered there. Yeah, I'm sure you know that already. Behavior. These folks are from Good. South Dakota. The fossils we discovered in Utah, Nebraska, the Dakota. We gotta go now and out there. Thank you. So, so we need to go back up. I've been to studio tours one level up, is it? Or all the way up? It's all the way up. Oh, we're all the way up. All the way up here. So, Leanne's enjoying the cold food. We didn't really vlog our air food because we just went to Starbucks. Got a scone and a pumpkin, though. Good old breakfast. Leanne. Leon, as they call you. Leon. Can't say your name. Leon. Anyway, we'll see you later. Do you want to where you want to head? Just back row? Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, before we get too far gone, I want to introduce you to my co-host of the afternoon. SNL alumni and host of the Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Fallon. You're never going to miss it. Oh, hey there. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guy, Andy, and the greatest driver, Darrell. They're the best. I love them. Even though Andy owes me five bucks. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. All right, dude, safety rules, safety rules. Ladies and gentlemen, if you need the assistance during the tour, if you have a medical emergency, if you have something of value over the side, or if you have sound or video issues, just reach up and pull that red cord that runs down the center of the tram, and I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe. <laughs> Otherwise, during the entire tour, please remain seated, keeping your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. The studio is private property, so if any time you drop your cell phone or you just can't wait to use the restroom, reach up and pull that cord and remain seated. Good? Good. This one's kind of a no breaker. No smoking of any kind. Sorry, Frank. And be prepared for loud noises. Fire effects. Sudden tram movements and the possibility of getting wet, so do keep those cameras protected. And for those of you who have selfie sticks for your safety and the safety of those around you, please refrain from using them for the duration of the tour. All right, well, let's have some fun. We've just turned down our universal movie timeline. These original movie posters on either side of the tram, just a few examples of the more than 8,000 films we've made here in the last century. 
We're about to cross into our front lawn, which houses our 28 sound stages. In these buildings, we can create any environment the story demands. A great example coming up at the bottom of this hill is Sound Stage 12. It's the largest sound stage on our lot, where we've created some of the biggest sets, some of the biggest moments in movie history, like Frankenstein's Laboratory. Dracula's Castle. of all the filming we do here at Universal is done in these sound stages we're driving past. Recently working in stage 20, coming up on your left, the series Bel Air, which is a reimagining of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air with a dramatic twist or spin. That's streamable on Peacock. Stage 19 over here on your left. It's where Steven Spielberg shot the kitchen scene from Jurassic Park with the Hammond grandchildren being hunted by the Velociraptors. But the elephant door's over there. Yeah, the elephant door's are about 17 and 16. Recently working in there, the series Hacks. It stars Golden Globe winner for Best Actress in a Comedy Series, Gene Smart. And the Kelly Clarkson Show is right around the corner on stage one. So all this to say, we're in a very, very busy area for production right now. In fact, even this parking structure over here on your left leading into the movies. It doubled as a massive cliff face for the Lost World Jurassic Park. When a T-Rex touches the mobile lab over the edge, things fall on Juliet Moore, Jeff Goldman inside. It's a great example of production design. A little bit later on, I'll show you the mobile lab that actually got the nudge in that scene for the T-Rex. Just wait till we get to Skull Island. Because over the years, we've taken audiences from the bottom of the ocean to the surface of the moon. And we did so with help esteem. Now, movies are based on illusions. These metropolitan sets are a great example of just that. They may appear to be built out of brick and stone, but they're actually made of foam rubber and fiberglass over metal and wood frames. We call them facades. Over here on your right is Brownstone Street. That was home to Jim Carrey and Bruce Almighty. Place the door! What's in the shaft? And I'm sure many of you are going to recognize the area we're turning into now. I'd like to let them call the Courthouse Square. Otherwise known as Hill Valley, from Back to the Future, starring Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. The City Hall facade over here on your left is the clock tower from Back to the Future. It was actually the back lot of the courthouse square that inspired the entire climax to Back to the Future. I had scenes up on the clock tower on that ledge. There was a ledge about that wide. And I was standing inside looking at the ledge, and I already had vertigo. I just thought there's no way in the world, no way I'm going to stand on that. I was up there for quite a while. Of course, I had a cable. <laughs> you can't talk about New York without somebody who knows the town. So once again, here's Jimmy Fallon. Remember, campers, gas and 
electricity, a lethal combination. Probably just helping that woman check out. Oh, she's checked out all right. Uh oh. Now he's checking us out. <laughs> Sorry, car four. Looks like some of you aren't going to make it. Things over there with the overalls. No, we're going there now. We're going there now. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> well, you two have a great time, okay? You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.